What qualifies as good? What qualifies as bad? What makes a villain? And what makes a hero? What is the difference between the aforementioned? Is it what you are perceived to be? Or what the world paints you to be? These are just some of the many questions that relate to the prevalent themes in the light novel series of Bleach, Can't Fear Your Own World. Now, what is Can't Fear Your Own World? Can't Fear Your Own World is the best light novel series I have read. It takes place a few months after the Thousand Year Blood War, and the best way to describe it is that it takes most of what you know about the franchise and flips it upside down. Numerous plot holes were filled, and fans of Bleach had their minds blown with the new information. It felt as if everything you thought you knew was wrong, as there were missing pieces to the puzzle that you thought you once had solved. In general, there are different perspectives to everything and Can't Fear Your Own World changed everyone's perception of the characters and events in Bleach. Suddenly, the bad guys didn't seem so bad and the good guys didn't seem so good. Before I go more into detail about the series, I want to cover who created the light novels. The series was made by Ryogo Naruta and Taite Kubo. Naruta, who wrote the light novels, did an excellent job throughout it. Kubo had direct supervision for the series and shared many details of Bleach lore. And the result was Can't Fear Your Own World, Volumes 1-3. to What I'm trying to say is that Can't Fear Your Own World is considered to be canon. And for that reason, I highly recommend Bleach fans to check it out after they finish the Thousand Year Blood War. This video will serve as an introduction to the series where I will be discussing the important discoveries made for the various characters in Camp Fear Your Own World. More on that later, but for now I will discuss what I enjoyed about the series. One thing I enjoyed about Camp Fear Your Own World is that it does a great job of depicting moral ambiguity. We always knew there were different sides to everything and Camp Fear Your Own World accentuates the different perspectives we thought we were missing in Bleach. I particularly enjoyed the portrayal of the villainous characters. In Bleach, we were introduced to monsters, villains that were undoubtedly evil. For most of the part, characters were portrayed in a black and white fashion. Good, bad, just, evil, with a few characters being morally indecisive. But Camp Fear Your Own World changes that. It was the antithesis of what you thought you knew, and most characters of interest had a completely different side to them. The light novel series gave us better insight into why villains behaved the way they did. The majority of them thought that what they were doing was right. Most Bleach villains, and in fact many villains in general are like that. They do things that they perceive to be right. They do things that, in their mind, will make them the good guy. Things that will lead them to the righteous destination. But oftentimes that is not the case. The path to hell is paved by good intentions. And I feel that this quote does well to represent most of the villains in Bleach. As we have often learned in real life and history, it is the ones with good intentions that often cause the most harm. That is the case with Bleach villains like Aizen, Ginjo, and Yuha. They simply did what they thought was right and in their position, with their experiences, you can probably argue that they were right, but the path that they take to bring their ideals or dreams into reality is often what causes them to twist into monsters. Above all, they are monsters with ideals. Monsters that you can relate to. That is what makes these villains understandable. And I feel Camp Fear Your Own World did a great job in doing that. However, some monsters don't operate in the same way. No matter how hard you try, sometimes it is impossible to defend and make sense of these villains. These monsters are not something you can agree upon. These are the villains who just want chaos. The ones who enjoy suffering and find great joy in inflicting pain. We are introduced to one of these monsters in Camp Fear Your Own World. The Twisted Nobleman, a crooked ghost of the past, Tsunaya Shiro Tokenada. Funny enough, sometimes these very monsters make the most sense. Sometimes they are right, even when we want to believe with all our hearts that they are wrong. Sometimes, it's the saints of the world who are in the wrong. Sometimes, the heroes we grew up to love and admire, in fact, have a hidden villainous side to them, and vice versa. Our lives are no different if you think of it. No one is born as a saint or a demon. As life goes on, you may come to be a saint or a demon, but that does not mean you would not commit acts from the other side. It is through your actions that you are labeled as a good or bad person, but that doesn't mean you are forever stuck with that label, and it does not mean that that label is accurate to you. The purest of souls are capable of committing evils, just as the most treacherous of beings can do some good. 
and I feel Can't Fear Your Own World portrayed this well. Once you dive deep and read the texts of the light novels, you are shown a different dark side that shows that no one is right or wrong. A side where you can empathize with the ones you once called monsters, and even see the monster side of the so-called heroes. As I have mentioned already, we saw that the villains could be seen through the lens of heroes, and the heroes in the lens of villains. It all depends on the lens that you see things through, and I found this to be very fitting to real life. Oftentimes, you are told a convenient news, the news that pushes a narrative of what the overarching powers want you to believe. But that isn't always the real truth. Throughout your life, you may come to find the other side of things and be blown away considering that you were wrong this whole time. In a way, this can be likened to the anime manga and the light novels, with the anime slash manga being the point of view of the Soul Reapers, the Victors, and the Camp Fury Own World series being a rabbit hole that introduces you to the other, forgotten and tarnished side. There was once a saying that went, there are three sides to every story, your side, their side, and the truth. Camp Fury Own World sort of reminded me of that, as we are introduced to the other side as well as the truth. You could say, Can't Fear Your Own World is Hasagi's path to uncover the truth. This leads to the next topic I will be discussing. Perhaps the most important theme in Can't Fear Your Own World is the pursuit of truth, and Shuhei Hisagi is the catalyst to all these discoveries. As the protagonist of the series, Hisagi is on a quest to find the truth. At first, he was simply looking for content as a journalist, but little did he know, he would come across the deepest and darkest secrets of the world all the while learning more about himself. Hisagi will learn secrets he never wanted to hear, truths that he wished he knew earlier. He would uncover the source of many of the world's problems, and even a plot to take over the realms. Although Hasagi was not there to uncover every secret or plot development, he does play a part in most of them. I will go through most of the important findings from the series in later videos. To add to that, we will also discuss what it is that exemplifies a Soul Reaper, and who best represents that title. This was a question that was asked at the beginning of the series, and I found it to be very interesting. What does it mean to be a Shinigami from Bleach? What characters best represent the values of the Soul Reaper? In general, this is a hard question to answer as there are many candidates. We see the heroes that overcome despair like Ichigo, wise men of tremendous insight like Urahara, brilliant inventors like Mayuri, powerhouses like Kampachi, prodigies like Toshiro, cunning geniuses like Aizen, and the list goes on. All these characters are exceptional in their own right, but again, which character embodies what it means to be a Soul Reaper? According to a certain novel, it is a character that you would least expect. It is an opinion-based question, but according to Camp Fear Your Own World, the character is as clear as light, since the main themes of the story all revolve around him. That character is Shuhei Hisagi, a man who does not carry the exceptional traits and fame as those above, which is maybe what qualifies him as a good candidate. Regardless of that, Hisagi does carry some important traits, namely his pride as a soul reaper, his keen eye to find the truth, and his strong will to fight for justice and against his fear. That said, there is no right answer in general for who best exemplifies a soul reaper, as, again, it is opinion based. Nevertheless, I thought it was an interesting question and I'll be talking more about it in my future videos for the characters I discuss. All in all, I am interested in hearing who you think best exemplifies a Soul Reaper. Let me know in the comments. Can't Fear Your Own World also shows us the radical changes the Soul Society is going through. After losing Yamamoto, Shunsui would take over as Captain Commander, and although you would assume not many changes would be happening, you would be wrong. After the events of Camp Fear Your Own World, the reputation of the nobles will be at an all-time low. New secrets have been discovered in this time that will bring upon monumental change in different ways. With the reliance of nobility slowly dwindling, a new soul society will emerge. The old ways are slowly eroding with the loss of Yamamoto. Whether Shunsui and everyone else will change things for the better or the worse, only time will tell. So far, they are making steady progress, namely by getting the characters from the various races to work together rather than constantly being at each other's throats. I feel this is definitely Shunsui's doing, as he is laid back, polite, and understanding to others, but also very Machiavellian when needed. Compared to Yamamoto, who was hell-bent on the old ways, it makes sense that the Soul Society is going through change under Shunsui. 
One section that I found interesting was the opening segment of Can't Fear Your Own World. It showed a quote from the academic handbook of the Shinorei Jutsuin Academy titled Soul Reaper Regulations Encyclopedia. There were two quotes, one from an older edition and another from one new one. Other than a few changes to the wording, the main differences I see between them is the final words. The older edition says, Should thee seek to protect thy kin and the five dukes, slay all foes indifferently as shadows of leaves. Whereas the new one replaces it with, if you really want to protect something, attack the enemy from behind. This could have been the influence of Shun Sui, who advocates dark methods of victory such as attacking from behind, employing monsters like Aizen and so on. Shun Sui believes that when you engage in combat, everyone is evil. And so these words do remind me of him. Compared to the old edition, you can argue that maybe there were representative of Yamamoto, or at least the old ways of giving utmost importance to the Soul King, Zero Squad, and you could maybe even interpret the five dukes as the five royal clans, although there are only four left at this point. If so, having them removed from the text could show us that the importance of them has dwindled over the years, and if you assume the text was taken after Camp Fear Your Own World's events, it makes sense. All of that said, this video is serving as an introduction to a Camp Fury Own World series. I will be going through the main developments for certain characters along with my own analysis. If you haven't read Camp Fury Own World, this series will give you a good idea of what happened. And if you have, I will be giving an in-depth analysis on different topics, giving an overall new perspective. I will also be talking about potential scenarios and future outcomes for the different characters I discuss. Before I end the video, I do want to let you know of the characters I will be making videos on. Who will my Camp Fury Your Own World series cover? Look out for my videos on Lord of the Shadows, Son of the Soul King, The Almighty Quincy King Yuha Baha, The Blind Swordsman, The Loyal Assassin with Lofty Ideals, Kaname Tozen, the Ascended One Himself, the Ever-Evolving Enigma, the One Who Lies While Speaking the Truth, Sosuke Aizen, Mr. Haddon Clogs, the Orchestrator of Bleach, the Shady Man of a Thousand Plans, Kisuke Urahara, the Tarnished Substitute, the Hybrid, the Cold and Cool Soul Stealer of the Fullbringer and Soul Reaper, Ginjo Kugo, and finally, the Crooked Ghost of the Past, the Sadistic Psycho, Treacherous Thorn of the Sunayashiro, Sunayashiro Tokunada, along with the man of the series, the one who governs life and death, the chained Scarface, Mr. 69 himself, Shuhei Hisagi, 